If you've recently gotten a 5800X 3D, here's three things you should do to make sure it works with full performance. This is something I encounter after installing the 5800X 3D in my system. I just went straight into performance testing without updating the BIOS first. And to my surprise, it was slower than my 5600X or in some cases, roughly the same. First of all, if you want to check if your CPU suffers from this issue, I suggest getting an MSI afterburner or other CPU monitoring software. Doesn't matter which one you choose. After you have it installed, launch a game or a benchmark of your choice, CSGO, Valorant, Apex Legends all work perfectly fine. After playing for a couple of minutes, check the performance graphs of your CPU. What you're looking for is the maximum boost value of the CPU. Typically it's around 4.5 GHz. If it's anything lower than that, for example 3.5, 3.6 GHz, you need to update your chipset BIOS and quite possibly clear your CMOS settings. Let's start with the easiest one, the chipset. Depending on which brand you went with for your motherboard, you should check the respective support page for the chipset driver. I'll use Asus as an example as this is the motherboard I'm currently using. To make it easier, just type in Google the brand, the model and add chipset driver. Go to the website and download the most recent one. If you're updating your drivers regularly, chances are you already have the latest one and then you can just skip this step. Otherwise, launch the installer and proceed with the instructions. After everything is done, you might have to do a restart. Second step is the BIOS update. For this part, most of the times you will need a USB drive. If you have one prepared, format it so that it's nice and fresh. After that, go to your manufacturer's website or use Google to find the latest BIOS update for your motherboard. Same as for the chipset. Download the file and extract it to your USB drive. You might need to do some additional steps like renaming the file. Usually all the instructions are included on the support page or in the file itself. After that is done, restart your PC and enter BIOS settings. Usually you can do it by pressing the delete or deal key while the system is loading. When you're there, find the BIOS flashback can have different names for different manufacturers and from the list choose the USB drive you've just prepared. Word of caution though, this update can and probably will wipe all of your saved settings within your BIOS, so be sure to either memorize them or save them somewhere to have them reconfigured. After all is done, let the PC boot normally. Before you go on with CMOS reset, you can do another test of the CPU's performance, same as before. If it boots to 4.5 GHz, you're fine. No need to do the CMOS reset procedure. However, sometimes it is required for the changes to update in the motherboard, and it was the case for me. In order to do a CMOS reset, you will need to find the CMOS reset procedure in your motherboard manual. Here's an example of how it looks for my motherboard, but it can be completely different for each brand and model, so please do your research diligently. So as you can see, in order to do a CMOS reset for the B550i Strix Gaming, I need to short circuit two pins. You can do it the elegant way if you have a header, or you can do it my way by just using a simple screwdriver and sticking it so it connects to both pins. After that, the PC will reset and should boot you directly into BIOS. Same as before, this will delete your other BIOS settings, so be sure to have them saved somewhere. After you're done restoring the settings, restart the system, let it load windows and do another boost test. This time it should be fine and you should see the frequency boosting at 4.5 GHz. Let me know down in the comments if you have any additional questions or remarks and don't forget to subscribe if you found this video helpful. I'm Laser, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.